offer a feature that all of the content that you create as a brand, anyone at your company can then share that content. This is gold. And the reason this is gold is because Google indexes all of this content. And because there's so many users on LinkedIn and Facebook, Google deems them to be very reputable in the search engine optimization game. So if you have your company's website, you have a LinkedIn profile for your company, you have a profile for yourself, and you have a Facebook page, Google's going to love you. And every time people search for something in your region, you're going to show up. Um, a lot of times the Google Maps that, that are created, those are created by users using Google, whether it's the directions app or their web browser. You don't get a lot of opportunity to change what Google says about you unless you've changed it on all of your areas. So you wanna make sure again, you have your Facebook page updated with the right address. And that about section is what the search engines are gonna to use to show up when they search for you only on Google or Bing, whichever people use. Um, the LinkedIn page, the LinkedIn profile, and then also your website. All of that is interconnected. Those keywords are important as well, so you'll wanna make sure they're consistent. How am I doing on time? Just wanted to double check, okay, good deal. Um, so, how this is all interconnected as employees are sharing content as you are sharing content on a brand what we're starting to see within our organization is that that is that is starting to influence not only hires but this this key term of engagements so engagements are when people like comment share and reshare your content um, and so we've been using this program now for two years. And like I said, this is now going to be a free tool with LinkedIn um, coming in the next quarter. And so as you're sharing content on LinkedIn, you're now going to be able to harness the power of these engagements. And why these engagements are important is because people are sharing your brand's message. Kind of going full circle back to Willy Wonka, right? Why are we on social media? Nobody really cares about it. It's everything about authenticity and credibility to a brand. Um, you can do some really cool, powerful things with social media. Um, we run ads right now on Facebook for $30 that run for two weeks, and we run them before and after a pursuit life cycle. So you're talking very nominal spend to reach the right audience um, pretty quickly. So this is a little bit of what it looks like um, on the desktop. So for us, we curate a lot of content. We're writing a lot of blogs. We're sharing our website pages. So in the new version of this tool, they haven't announced what the screen grabs, like what it will actually look like, but the sentiment is the same. You would be able to log into your LinkedIn page um, and you'd be able to connect it to your website, to your service pages that you wanna promote. You'd also be able to connect it to any blogs that you might have written. Blogs are a really big deal because people want to learn more about what you have to offer. Um, and then you also can connect it to any of your shops. So if you use um, Shopify or, or anything like that, you can connect it as well so people can have an immersive shopping experience in both platforms. Um, so this is kind of the same thing. I'm gonna skip through a few of these for time as well. So marketing campaigns are also an area um, that you can connect with HubSpot also. So as you want to promote, maybe um, we have a local bread company here called Green Truck Bakery. And so I'll see ads for whatever the loaf of the week is. Um, and it's a great way for them to connect with people that are following their channels to then tell us. Whereas if you just posted it natively on your channel, I wouldn't see it because you might not be posting as frequently as the algorithms need to be able to just to display it to me. And so in this case, what you're looking at is this, the website, which is over here on the left-hand side, and the social promotion that then drives to the website. So you could consider having that social post that then says, hey, like it's jalapeno cheddar is the, the loaf of the week this week. Click here to sign up and to order yours today. Um, and it's a nice experience because I, I really enjoy knowing what they have. I don't have to post or make that that brand be the first thing I see every time I'm, I'm in Facebook, but I still get all of the information when I want it. And so that's a really cool way to do that. Um, again, for us, we share the blogs that we've posted that way. We also share white papers or, or eBooks and videos. 
Um, but this is a slide that just kind of gives you some hard numbers as to how we've seen a big impact at Burns and Map regarding social. So for us, when we are sharing and our employees are sharing, over 61% of the leads we are generating are coming from employees sharing our content. They're not coming from our brand sharing our content. It's coming from employees sharing that content. And it goes back to that credibility and that authenticity. Um, if Hoel shares it as opposed to Burns and Mac, um, you, you can localize it. It makes more sense for your network. Um, and we're seeing that in the numbers. So additionally, um, and lastly, um, when you're looking at your different prof, your different channel pages, it's really important to dive into the analytics, not to get overwhelmed, but to use it in a way to be able to communicate with your audiences and have your content resonate. So this is a LinkedIn view. So what we do is we look at our followers based on where we also have regional offices. We wanna make sure that if we're focusing a message in the Phoenix area, if we don't have followers there, that message is never gonna reach that region. And so we might run a paid ad to reinforce that message in that region. And the goal would be to gain those followers there. So the next time we share that content, they see it. We also pay attention to people that follow the channels if they have the same job titles that we're trying to reach. Um, and so the demographics work that way as well. Facebook um, is really cool with their demographics. Now there are privacy laws that I'm sure you all have heard about. Um, and in different states, there's even more privacy laws. So um, California right now, everyone's anonymous um, unless you give that um, permission. And so for Facebook, you'll always see it at a demographic level. You won't see it at an individual level. So in this case, we do the same thing. We measure by regional office. Um, but I've always been surprised by the gender stat for us. Um, for some reason, I just expected the female demographic to be more of our Facebook followers than our male um, Facebook followers, but um, the males outwin. And you might ask, okay, like what is a company like Burns and Mac doing with having 13 to 17 year olds? Well, we have job shadow forms. We also, that Battle of the Brains event that I shared earlier, that's a big program for elementary and middle schoolers to engage to, um, they actually get to build exhibits at Science City, which is a local um, uh, place at Union Station downtown Kansas City so they design and they engineer and they construct and they get to be a part of that program and so when I see 13 to 17 I get excited about that because hopefully we're re reinvigorating STEM throughout the communities um, but again looking at your your ages you start to understand what types of content are resonating Within the native channel, you'll also get the regional space. So you'll be able to see within your city which neighborhoods are also resonating with your message. You get the same data on your paid ads. So use this data. Don't, don't be um, overwhelmed by it. Get curious about it and learn. Uh, it's, it, once you start to hand, get a handle on it, it's, for me, it's really easy for me to geek out on it and want to, to tweak different things along the way. Um, but it is pretty easy once you get in there. And there's a ton of YouTube tutorials um, that can walk you through setting up a Facebook ad. Um, and again, with HubSpot, I kind of sound like the sales rep for HubSpot, but um, I believe in this tool very much. I've seen it grow. I started with this tool when there were only 20 people that worked at this company and I've seen them go public and I've seen them stay true to their, their morals and values and North Star, if you will. Um, and their tool continues to support all of those sizes of companies and continues to give things like the, the um, ability to have the chat bot, the ability to bring in your, your Facebook, but the cool thing too is they also do a ton of trainings and they're all free. They have one lesson on how to set up a social media campaign, how to set up advertising on social media, and they're quick video tutorials that then you can take and you can learn. And everyone on my team goes through these tutorials every year. Um, we're constantly using um, that. And they also have a great Facebook page that you can follow as well. So if I were going to invest in a platform, that's the platform I would invest in and I would connect all of your social to it. And the last thing that I have is Twitter. Um, <laughs> again, it's not a channel that we really focus on a lot to be relative. Like you got to post at least 10 times a day. And quite frankly, like with a team of three, it's not a priority for us. 
we're there to have a presence. Um, but if we were able, sometimes I wish that we were a B2C company because I would have some fun with people that love Burns Mac and also love dogs and sporting events. And I think that there could be some really cool things that you could do to attract people and engage in the conversation. Um, it's just not our brand. And so we, we just don't, we're not Wendy's, so we just don't get to go there yet. But um, I knew I kind of flew through that. I knew I had too many slides, but hopefully it resonated. And um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I'm also, you can reach out to me afterwards um, if you have specific questions as well. All right. Thank you so much, Bethany, for that great presentation. I really appreciate it. You guys are obviously very, very knowledgeable in all of this. I uh, want to remind everybody that this is uh, being recorded, so we're going to be putting together an archive of these programs, so you will be able to access those uh, via, I, I believe we're working on a website page and archive on our website right now. So when that's up and running, we will broadcast this out to everybody so you can access this later on for your knowledge. A uh, couple questions did come in, uh, and this is obviously directed towards you, Holel, and you, Bethany. Um, if, you, if a business only does one platform, which one would you recommend? And, and that's keeping in mind, uh, there, are, there are a lot of small businesses on here. Um, there, there are some retail, but we, we, we are seeing a lot of restaurants and, 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 and items on that, on that level. Which one platform would you recommend? I would definitely recommend Facebook connected to Instagram. They're owned by the same company and everything that you share on one channel can automatically be posted to the other. So I would focus on Instagram, um, especially if you're a restaurant, you could take a lot of photos of your food um, and then utilize the hashtags and the mentions and you'd be able to get a lot of miles out of that channel. Got it, got it. And as a follow-up to that, uh, we have Kayla Ladd on the, on the chat here. She's actually saying she prefers to use Instagram uh, to showcase their products. Uh, what tips or advice do you have for Instagram posts? Um, as many times as you can tag other individuals to leverage their networks, the better. Um, again, all of these social channels, it's kind of a twofold game. It's an algorithm game, working the numbers of the platform and understanding how the platform functions to then be able to beat the system, if you will. It's a lot like Moneyball. Um, and then being able to have those tags, Google will also start to index you. So while people might be on Instagram, Instagram also utilizes the Google indexing to also give more relevancy. But no matter what, um, always be authentic. People see right through it. Be sure that if you're taking photos of some products, you're not over filtering things for aesthetic reasons. Um, you're as true to what they will get as possible. Thank you for that. Um, one question that popped up, you, you, you had a lot of information on there on the, on, the, on, on the analytics and demographics. Is there a simple platform to access all that? I think you mentioned that there's free points of, 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 of entrance on that. Yeah, so each channel natively has their own analytics and an admin function. So if you're just focusing on Instagram, you have a pain to be able to look at what all of your posts are doing and how they're performing. That doesn't happen if you have a personal page. So you have to be sure that you stand up a business page, not a personal profile to be able to harness all of those analytics. I think that's one of the distinctions people may not always realize. Um, if you are on multiple channels and you want to be able to start to see everything together and you want to also do email, that's where I would recommend HubSpot because you'd be able to visit one place throughout um, the workday to see it all. Cool. Cool. Thank you for that. Uh, Michael Broom asks, when using Instagram, any tips on specific times to post and how frequently? Yes, so at least seven times a day on Instagram. Um, and you'll also get analytics that will start to show how many followers are engaging at their different times. Um, they, like for, um, for me, it's at different times of the day. So 10 o'clock in the morning for our brand tends to work really well. Um, and each channel is going to be different and you'll see different spikes there. But seven times is really the best for Instagram. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Again, I really appreciate your guys' time today. If there's any more questions that, is, is that come in later on or if, you, or if you want to access this video, please contact our office and, um, and I will, uh, hopefully we can ask some questions on our Facebook group and, and Bethany, being the social media expert you are, hopefully you'll engage us on that platform. Um, but thank you so much for, for your time today. Uh, I, 
I'd be remiss if I and and, and I'd be remiss if I did not uh, 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 recognize my team. Um, we have Aaron White one of our business development managers, as well as Wendy Bridges, one of our other business development managers, uh, Lisa Lance, our economic development analyst, and, uh, and Cheryl Kilbert, the, the assistant director. They made all this happen. I'm, uh, I'm just some talking head. I'm like Max Headroom here. So uh, I really appreciate you, you, all, you all joining us today. Uh, next up, we're going to have um, Aaron Reyna with Colado's Coffee and Crepes. He's gonna give us a little bit of, of, of intel about what he's been doing, what what they've been doing to uh, to, uh, to to pivot and to, and to work in this new environment, and um, and share their story. Thank you. All right. Is that my party going? All right. So uh, my name is Aaron Reyna uh, from Colados Coffee. Uh, my family runs a local coffee shop and crepes here in the valley in arizona uh, we opened about six years ago and uh, my mom started our instagram account and started following uh, six thousand people on instagram and um, i guess it started to work people started following me back uh, ever since then i kind of picked it up um, and right now we have about thirteen thousand people following us on um, on instagram we have about twenty thousand following on facebook um, and something that we've been doing right now, especially with the whole um, pandemic, is um, really trying to communicate all the changes. At first, we struggled a lot with um, trying to get people to know what's going on. There's a lot of changes going on with, um, you know, regulations and things. So we have, luckily, we have a, a, an advisor, business advisor, to help us right away uh, to make those choices as fast as possible and safe as possible. So, you know, my job as, you know, I'm a marketing manager, uh, I focus more on the graphics, pictures, things that I can post. And um, one, of, one of the pictures that really did well was our um, coffee is essential. To show you guys, you guys can see. Um, and this was really, I got a lot of good comments because a lot of people really connected to it. Let me see if you guys can see that. Lighting's a little bad. So, you know, these are the kind of pictures that we use and we call it uh, stop the scroll um, because when people are scrolling, you want, you want them to stop and see, okay, what's, what's going on. And that's really the, the big deal with, um, with um, Instagram and, and social media, especially Facebook, since it's a little crowded, you want it to stop the scroll, you want to get their attention. So, you know, when I'm taking a picture, when I'm taking a picture of food or crepes, uh, we wanted it to be something to grab their attention. You know, we wanted at least to stop and see what's going on. And, you know, that's going to be the best way for you guys to see, you know, get, get your, your communication out there, get the people to know what you're doing so they can connect with you. So whenever, you know, you're thinking about posting restaurant food or whatever it is, it's important to know, you know, what do you want them to see? Why do you want them to stop? How can I make this? So they're like, Oh, you know, I need to click that. I need to go there because it's also a great reminder for them to to really see what's going on and just to refresh them of, of what's going on in, in the community. Um, and then recently, I've created uh, as I'm working with other people um, that are helping me out with uh, social media. I created a guide um, just so we can communicate, um, and I'm, I want to share it with you guys. And it's just a little bit of what to do when we're posting a picture. Um, that way we have an idea of, you know, what to expect and what, what not to expect. So, um, so number one I have here, one second, I don't know why I lost it again. Okay, a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, especially more on Instagram. Um, it's hard to really put a lot of words on Instagram on a picture because it's mostly a uh, picture since um, uh, we use mostly Instagram and then we kind of go and spread that out through um, Snapchat. We spread it out through Facebook. Um, so why, why is a, a picture worth a thousand words? Because people like to see visual. When people buy, especially food, uh, we've learned that people want to see a picture. If we have an Nutella crate, they're like, can we see it? We want to see the details. We want to see what's, you know, how it's made. So when we post the picture, we want the people to see the image, actually what's going on. That way they can, uh, 
they can get an idea of what to expect when they get it and they can uh, feel a lot, a lot better of uh, what they bought. And they, they don't have to see like, well, I don't see it. Usually when you go to a restaurant, if you see two or three pictures, that's gonna be the ones I sell the most. So that's, that's the first one. And the second uh, point I have is uh, a who. Uh, it's not the photo, it's about the feeling. So that, there comes the aesthetics. You know, a lot of people, uh, there's a coffee shop in LA that it's very famous, it's called uh, Alfred. And they're all about how the, the decor of the building, you know, when you get in there, you, you, taste, you taste the difference because I'm pretty sure you guys know that coffee at home and a coffee in a cabin, it's gonna feel a lot better at a cabin because of the uh, ambiance, the, you know, the aesthetics around. So, you know, you have to tell a story, you have to, you know, create a feeling when you post something. Sometimes if you post like something tropical, it'll, it'll take you to a vacation that you went in the past. Um, so that helps us to really build a theme when we're posting something a couple of times. And then we have a, a when, a call to action. When you post something, it's also good to, if you have something going on, like it's a special, or you have a drink that's gonna be here for a limited time, uh, to say, hey guys, you know, be straightforward so they know that, you know, there's an action. We just introduced uh, selling coffee uh, from home, coffee beans from our coffee shop. We, we especially most on the crepes, or like this is a great opportunity to, to change the game. So we started offering coffee bags and we were able to get them through uh, Uber Eats as well. And then also provide a why. You know, sometimes it's good to remind people why you're open. Uh, our mission at Colados is to make your day. So recently we've been going out to give um, crates to the people in the front lines. So, you know, that's our why. We want to make their day, even if it's not in the restaurant. Uh, so you want to continue with our, uh, our mission. Also teaching people something. Um, the best way to get to people is to inform and to entertain at the same time. If you can do those two, then people are going to love you and they're going to come back to you. So um, a couple of times we post uh, stuff about what is a crate, where does it come from, and we can do it, you know, kind of funny with a French accent and also provide insight. And then always give credit, you know, especially if you repost something from a customer or something that you see, it's always important to ask them for permission and always give them the credit so um, people get to see that you're, you're more authentic. Um, and then a couple of last things is, um, show it, don't say it. Uh, try to lose less words. And then uh, right now, captions are key. Uh, a lot of people are using captions to, they use some, something like phrases, puns, are always, always, always great. You never want to be very like, you want, you want to sell people and just, you know, you don't want to come off as just try, trying always to sell. Um, they say you, you post five to inform and you post one to sell. Usually people get to see like, okay, this guy's just trying to sell me. Like there goes another picture of Colados with another creative that's trying to put in. But when, you, when you're there to provide value to people and try to inform them, usually you're gonna have people uh, coming back again so they can um, see that you're actually becoming something of value in their life. So those are the, 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 the tips, four or five tips that I use when posting and I, I try to send to other people. So they get an idea that um, it's not just posting and you have to be very intentional. And I do mostly of the, I take the pictures and I have uh, people who help me uh, post it and boost it on social media. So it, it's, it gets complicated sometimes trying to post the right thing. And, but sometimes the, the more raw, like uh, Bethany said, try not to filter it over filter pictures. And that used to be me at the start. You wanna make it the best pictures. I got a great camera and I was, you know, it took me like two hours to take one picture. I would post it and it would only get like five likes. And then my mom would post another picture of a crepe just with her phone and it would get like go viral. So, you know, we're seeing that people like the, authentic the, the authenticity of pictures. They want to see the rawness. They want to, they want to see the up close pictures, whether it's, you know, food or, you know, whatever industry it is, um, the more raw it is, the more original. Um, people are more likely to connect with those things and it really represents who you are, that you're a person who's um, really open and th they get to trust you in a way. And um, we're excited to announce, we wanna do, uh, we're gonna start podcasts at our uh, coffee shop and you wanna involve other businesses so they can come in and talk about their business. I think the local business needs a lot of help, uh, including us. When we started, we had no idea what was going on. Thankfully, we got a lot of help from 
uh, local business, uh, other local businesses. We, we had an advisor that came and helped us out. So we really want to help the community and that's the best way that you can grow by helping other people. Not that we know everything, we have everything figured out. We've only been open for six years. But we learned a couple of things and we want to share that with the community. And that's what it's all about, helping other people, helping other, other communities so they can grow and, and really learn uh, what you have learned. So there goes my presentation. Thank you so much, Aaron. Much appreciated. Um, we are, uh, if you have any questions, please type them in that chat box up there on the upper right corner. We're, uh, we're, we're, we're reading from that. Uh, but one that did come through, uh, based on your experience, just you know, doing your social media as you were explaining and, and taking those photos, have you directly found that some of your posts have, have driven sales of one particular product over another? Yeah, almost all the time we post something, I go, I go and check up on our uh, sales and I see there's always an escalation of, uh, especially if something very craveable, if we have like a, a fried ice cream that we post and it's like right before we close, people are like, all right, dessert, let's go get it. So it is very influential um, and that's kind of what we do is sometimes we, um, I, sometimes I go back and see products that are not selling the most and we're like, all right, let's boost these up, see if that affects. Usually we do see an effect um, sometimes even instantly. Excellent, excellent. Uh, what other recommendations can you give to, uh, to people that may be new to the whole social media game, just as somebody that's, that's coming up from, a, from the small business point of view? Yeah, I would recommend um, finding people uh, that are similar to your business. Um, you know, like for example, with us, you know, I mean, sometimes I look into like Starbucks, see what they're doing. And read a book recently. It's called Scratching, it's not Copying. Uh, so when you get ideas and you you make them to, into yours, you know, maybe if I see a coffee with the sunset in the background, okay, how can I not copy this? But I, how can I make this uh, that fits our style? So it's always good to have somebody that you're following uh, to get ideas to see what's going on. People that have more experience, um, just to get ideas on what they're doing and not copy them. But how can you use this? to make it a twist and make it your own way. That way it's uh, an, your original idea. So, I mean, not all ideas, we get it from other people. It's inspiration from getting it from all other places. So I, I tend to seek inspiration from other people that, I, that have more experience and uh, just to, sometimes we get stuck and just to get more ideas and get refreshed. Excellent. Excellent. Well, it's much appreciated, Aaron. Um, I'm going to get. I'm going to encourage everybody to get on our, on the Avondale Edge Facebook page. Let's continue this conversation. Um, if there's any more questions for Aaron or for Joel or for Bethany, let's write them in the chat box right now. Um, but but again, I I, I appreciate everybody's uh, uh, time today, and um, we will be sending out a new. Uh, a, a new invite for our next uh, no, it's, it's business connection event here in the next uh, in the next week or so. If you have any topics you want us to cover in the in future ones, please let us know on that Facebook page. Um, Aaron, I, I I I sincerely appreciate you with, with 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 your conversation, your time today, and Hoel and Bethany, um, your expertise is much appreciated as well. Thank you all so much. Thank you.